What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to Impact Winter. My name is Splattercat and I'm happy to have you here today as we hang out for a little while and play this little game a tad longer. I think today we're gonna go ahead and try and make a run on whatever this thing is that they've got marked on our map. I don't know exactly what it is but they've got it marked and it appears to want me to go over there and so I'm gonna do that. We've been putting it off for a couple of days. We've probably got a decently sizable walk in front of us but maybe interesting things will happen along the way. Oh we've got another thing over here. Let's mark it on the map real fast so that we know it's here. There we go. And so now if we had C4, we could definitely get in there. I'm going to send out a little bit of a pulse. Ah, we got a dig spot up here. I had a feeling. I had my suspicions. For whatever reason, I felt like there was probably a dig spot up here. We'll go ahead and dig that on out, although that is going to cost Echo Light a bit of his battery. And searching this dig spot, we've got a colander, actually. No, it's a grater. Shit, a colander's round. Okay, so we've got a grater, we've got a shoe, plant pots. I'll take the wooden shingle, a.k.a. a shake, as we talked about in the previous episode. Uh, the newspaper... I'll take the cotton rag, I'll take the cotton reel. The drumstick, I'm not actually that enthusiastic about. The dig spot's still gonna be there, so I'll leave it there and we'll just pack rat some stuff away for later. What I'm learning about this game is I don't think you're supposed to pick up, like, everything you come across every single time. I think you're supposed to leave some of it for later. Can I do anything with the bus right here? Or is that just like a bust? It appears to be a bust. We'll go ahead and drop down off of this and keep on trucking to the east. Got a little bit of energy left, so I think we'll be all right. We've got a ambulance over here. Uh, let's check the ambulance. It might have some decent stuff for us. It's got a dropper, a syringe, painkillers, and a car battery. I'm going to save that for later. Can we get inside this truck over here? The blue blitzer event can no longer be completed. That's fine. I didn't care about that one anyways. Going down into that chasm was a giant waste of time. I'm going to bring the pills with me. Everything else can be on its way. I could find that being one of a... That, that would probably be a pretty considerable trade item in a world where everything has been destroyed by nuclear winter. I think... Let's see here. My bad, I accidentally hit the Xbox button. It looks like down there to the bottom right is what we're looking for, and I'm a little terrified to do it. I'll light off another flare, see if we can find a dig spot. No dig spot as of right now, but it looks like most of this area is going to be covered in snow, and also, more importantly, big-ass rocks that we can't get around. So this is the impact crater for where the disaster happened. I'm not going to walk near that rock, because when I was testing the game out last night, I got stuck when I, w when I went near the rock, and it just... I don't know, it bummed me out for some reason. I was just like, you know what, I'm not going to do this. Uh, how's our coldness looking? We're looking solid on the cold front. Uh, send out another flare real quick. Ah, we got another dig spot over here. So we'll go ahead and check this out. How's that going to affect my battery, though? Probably pretty badly. I assume that Echo Light's little butt laser is probably going to cost me some... Cost me dearly. Oh, we've got meteor fragments. I don't know if those are valuable or not. Maybe the nomads would probably want them. They seem to like strange, eclectic shit. And so I never know what I should bring with me. Uh, it's Maple Street. I think this is probably the place that Maggie wanted us to go to find her, like, random cookbook or something like that. We'll have a look real fast. Take a look. We need cookbooks for reading cooking stuff. LeVar Burton didn't make it through the apocalypse, and that's why our world is dark and no longer happy and filled with smiles. Uh, this is probably, I don't have an address or anything like that, but I will bring wiring and whatnot back with me. Uh, it looks like we can get inside the grandfather clock, and we got some cogs. The table desk ain't got nothing on it. That's got a glass pane. Until I have things that I, like, specifically need. So this is a record player. That'll give us a needle and a wire. The hell is that? Is there, like, a rat or something in here? Looks like we've got paper clips, we've got pens, we've got pencils and picture frames. Is that another robot? What the hell is that? I've got the key for this. There we go. I don't know if Echo Light... What is that right there? Is there something like in that hole or what's going on? The plant pot. I don't know if there's anything in here that it's so hard to select items sometimes. It looks like there's a seed. Uh, and one of the tips on the loading screen, it said that the nomads value... Ah, there's a motor, some switches, some screws. Yeah, any little bits and pieces I can have sounds good to me. Coal will probably help our fire burn a little bit longer. Uh, we've got 22 LR ammunition right there. I love shooting 22 LRs. Probably one of the most fun games, or one of the most fun... Ah, there's the cookbook. 
Uh, 22 LR is probably easily the most fun caliber to shoot by a long margin. 22 LR is a blast. If you've never shot guns before, I suggest starting with a 22 LR and you'll be addicted. 22 LR is like a little tiny caliber round that's just super fun because you can basically... Oh my god, I want to select this thing so badly, but it's not letting me... What's inside of here? We've got a heating element. We've got a thermostat, rotten food, meat scraps. I'm going to try and prioritize here. Oh my god, there's so much stuff. A hand blender. I mean, there's so many things in here that we could bring back with us. We've also got rat poison, probably useful for an event or something like that. We've got a cooler that we can bring back with us, pickles, water, I mean, there's lots of good stuff here. And so we are going to have to make multiple runs. I was hoping we weren't going to have to, but what is that right there? A floor tile? We've got crackers. I mean, everything in here is going to be chewed on by rats if they didn't protect it very well. All right, well, let's go back up to the surface, and it appears as though we have a good run in front of us. So one of the tips on the loading screen right now said that I can set up my robot to take items back to base for me? I don't know how to do that. It's not on the Echo Light menu, but it said something about campsites. And so it said something about, like, if I can find campsites, it will allow me to sleep at the campsite and take, like, a couple hours off while my robot runs everything back to base. That sort of thing would be hugely appreciated, because every time I have to run back to camp, it costs us a bunch of time that I just don't feel like going through with. So, let's have a look around and see what we can uncover here. We're going to do a bit of a scouting mission and see what we can find in this area. Echo Light, unfortunately, is running out of battery, so I'm going to turn off Echo Light's lamp for right now. It uh, looks like we got some stuff up to the north. We've got some vague stuff off. We'll go up to the northwest for right now. There's a graveyard on this side. And these are going to be recent because, as we can tell from the height, I bet we could dig in the graveyard and get loot. I bet you anything we can. But as we can tell from the height of the snow, that's probably fairly recent, uh, given the fact that people have been dying after the meteor fell. This looks like some kind of parking garage complex. I don't know if it counts as like a full-on building, but it does look like there is access to the roof. Over on this side, it looks like somebody tried to do some level of farming or something on the roof, or maybe they just had a garden that they like to maintain before everything went to shit. I don't know. Living in a... Oh, what the hell are those? Are those wolves? I don't know if I'm down with messing with wolves right now. Hopefully this overpass is cogent and intact so that we can avoid them. I'm not trying to get chewed on and eaten at the moment. Oh, there's cracks in the ground right there. I was like, what is... So apparently that's thin ice, maybe? So you got to be careful about that. That actually is... Uh, it's a real concern. If you know anything about, like, ice survival, uh, if you ever go on a river that's frozen over, the current still exists underneath that ice. So if you fall through, you're basically, like, like instantaneously dead because you fall through the ice and the current will suck you downstream and you'll never be able to get up above the... You'll never be able to get up above the water. It looks like there's a trading post right here. That's pretty cool. We're not going to mess around with that right now because, as I told you previously, this is a scout mission. We're just trying to find everything we can while we're out here that we can make use of. Uh, this looks like it's going to be another house location, 12 Grove Street. Okay, Grove Street seems to have gone on for quite some way back in the old civilized days. Is there anything within running distance that I can take care of? Uh, it looks like to the northeast we might have something. Cold is still fine. Our energy levels are still decent. So let's keep on looking around. I mean, we have plenty of time to go through and loot all this stuff later on. And frankly, the looting part of the game, I think, is a little unsatisfying at the moment just because it takes so much transit time for me to, like, take things from point A to point B. Maybe the tents are how I set up campsites. Maybe I'll get down with that, too, as I'll try and set up some campsites, like, in between various locations so that I can have stuff instantaneously transfer back and forth. Next time we go out, I'll bring a bundle of camp supplies with us, and we'll see if we can put down campsites. So we've got Paxton Street over here, and that's going to take us to a level up. Uh, congratulations, the time reward is 420. Blaze it! And so it's down by another four hours until we get rescued. Uh, we also get to pick a new thing. So taking a look here, we've got crafting times, quick reach. Okay, so quick worker gives them a greater chance of getting injured, but they craft stuff faster. Arguments will never occur between the team, but they get tired more frequently. And then we've also got one that makes morale go down slower. Let's go with Peacekeeper, just in case fights start to become super prevalent. Is there anything else over here, or am I basically just killing time at the moment? There's not really anything else over here, so I'm going to head back to the church and get us all suited up, and I don't need to put that on camera because, frankly, nobody wants to watch me walk in a straight line. Almost back at the church, but we actually have the Nomad over here, and I might have something he wants, so let's go ahead and talk to him real quick. 
Uh, unless he doesn't want to talk to me. It is possible that he is not in the mood for conversation right now. Look, I could push his ox around. Get out of here, ox. I can use it as like a snowblower. The ox can help me clear out my area. There we go. A little bit less snow so we don't get bothered. I don't have the drill upgraded yet, so I can't get inside the iceberg right there, but I promise at some point we'll get that done. There's a lot of things to undertake in this game, and you got to kind of hit them one by one. Otherwise, it'll just be like... I don't know. You just got to focus on things, I guess. So on this side, I've got coal. No problem throwing some coal in the fire. Throw a little coal on the fire. I got a drumstick right there. And we also have leather shoes, which will apparently burn. I'm not going to mess around with my planks. Do I Seriously, a wooden shingle will work. I'll go ahead and throw a wooden shingle inside of there. Hey, you've returned Wendy's recipe book. Speak to Wendy about the next steps. Okay, where's Wendy at? She's over here. New craftables are now available for Wendy. Thanks for bringing back my recipes, Jacob. Hopefully it'll refresh my mind and provide us with some new cooking possibilities. The great thing about recipes is that they're made from all the useless ingredients found in the void, and they also provide a much-needed morale boost, too. And did you know every recipe makes four portions? Much more effective than finding food, huh? Although I have to confess, I'm a little out of practice with some of these combinations. I suggest cooking the chicken pasta baked to get me familiar again. I imagine the best place to find the ingredients is those large containers. There's one nearby that would be a good place to start. Okay. And so apparently there's a new place we can go to work on her quest. I'm going to dump off the remainder of this gear inside of our little storage area. And then I'm going to do some food assignments and things like that just to make sure that everybody's happy. We have bullets in case we need to defend this place. I will also cook up some of the meat. And if I eat the meat, I should be able to keep my energy levels high. So we'll go over to the fire. And then we will cook the raw meat. And I think that's about all we got going on right there. I tend to reserve the meat for myself because it gives me an energy boost back. And since I'm the one running around actually doing stuff a lot of the time, it just makes your life easier. On this side, we've got cooked meat and cooked scraps. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to eat that. That will take my energy up ever so slightly, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Uh, we'll eat some mixed nuts as well. We have vegetable stir-fry down here, which sounds delicious. I personally love me some stir-fry. Let's see how people's energy levels are going right now, though. So she's used up her items in order to get her stuff back. Uh, we will give her cooked meat. She'll get a plus 25 from that. She's going to need some beverages. So we will give her a couple of colas, although in general that's a bad idea. Cola does not do a great job at getting you rehydrated. For our next person, he needs water, so we'll give that to him. So there's his water, and then as far as his food is concerned, we will give you uh, some meat scraps to get your health back there. So there we go. That'll also help him keep his energy nice and bumping. Uh, his energy is looking a little bit worse for the wear right now. He has been using the items to get his morale back, so that's good. We'll throw a couple meat scraps his way. Because I think we can pick up some more. And he's not really dehydrated right now. Because he's had beer this entire time. Uh, for her, I'm going to give her one of the... We'll give her some lemonades. And then on top of that, for food, I'll probably just give her... A little bit of vegetable stir-fry, I guess. So there we go. That'll bring her energy levels back up, too. And so everybody's had a food assignment. My character is still looking a little bit thirsty. So we'll go back. Kodak is so thirsty. Uh, we'll go ahead and give him a bottled water. Not going to use the ginger beer for right now, although grape soda works. We'll drink that. Energy levels are a little bad, though, so I'm going to take him over and let's see if we can rest inside of the beds and if anything can happen right there. With Maggie's menu, we still are missing, like, a few things, like nails are the big thing we need for a lot of this stuff. So we can't do anything right there just yet. Uh, with you, what can we craft with you? So we can get a campsite tent if we have some of this stuff. Make me a... So is the campfire upraised at all? Because I thought I told him to do that, but I don't know. A portable antenna allows the campsite to always be visible on Echo Lake's radar regardless of range. Okay. Well, I mean, we'll work our way through one by one. For her, does she have anything that she can cook for me right now? Or are we pretty much out of objects to cook? Oh, we need bottled water for a lot of it, and we just don't have any water left. Okay, water collection is going to be important sometime soon, but let's get a rest in. And he got them skinny legs. He really needs to do, like, his leg day. 
Sleeping will save your game and is a way for Jacob to get energy back. You can sleep in a bed at the church or at a campsite tent. Whilst resting, you can see his stats being affected by the passage of time. Oh, I can cancel sleeping whenever, too. Okay. I mean, I probably won't rest for that long. I'm just trying to get energy back, so there we go. Energy's good. I've already assigned food to everybody, so we'll get back out to the surface. And I actually wanted to play around with the campsites in this episode, so let's go ahead and find a tent. And in finding a tent, we'll see if we can start dropping campsites all over the map so we can start doing kind of like a, a gear swap type thing. So as far as camping supplies go, rifle clips, buttons, hairbrush, casimir sweaters. Uh, yeah, I'll move the campsite tent over with me. And it looks like we might be able to make a fire or something like that so that it stays up a little bit longer. So that's not going to be an upgrade that we use inside the base. I thought it was an inside the base upgrade. It is an outside of the base upgrade. So really what I'm aiming for right now is that I want to drop the campsite up by the trader. Uh, that way when I find items and I trade and everything like that, I should be able to drop that back over here and make my life a little bit easier. So without further ado, we're going to head back up to the northeast and we're going to try and find that trade post. I don't know how deep it is, but... It shouldn't be too bad. It looks like it's up here, so we'll go ahead and give that a go and see what happens. Our little dig spots occasionally have good stuff. I think that's a rabbit hole right there, not a dig spot. I think that's a little bit different. Let me kick on the light real fast, too, so that we don't lose our robot. Because losing one's robot, I mean, that's what we're striving towards. We're part of the scientific future, you know what I mean? If we all can't have personal robo-drones that follow us around and document our every move, what's the point in living? Along the way, I am going to pick up the, the items from the dig spots that we have over here. Unless there's nothing left. That's going to be an old 45 record, which I think the Nomad wanted, if I recall correctly. So we might be able to do something with that. This is, I think, Maggie's house. I think. Where is my trader at, though? He's either up to the top right... Or he's down elsewhere. We're looking for a building that has the words uh, trade on top of it. I think this might be it over here. I'm going to set off a flare. Ah, we got a dig spot right here, too. Uh, go ahead and do your thing, Echo Light. Dig that hoe. Dig that hoe. My bot be on a row because he dig that hoe. All right, so we got some other little things in here. I will take these with us. The tarpaulin is useful. And what I want to do for right now is, like, how do I set up the tent? Like, so let's say that I want to set up the tent, right? Oh, cool, I just do it like that, so yeah, I would put the tent down. There we go. Campsites provide a way for Jacob to stay warm, store items, and sleep whilst away from the church. They can also be upgraded to provide additional functionality. Every box side is with a deposit box that allows you... Okay, so cool. That sounds good. So if it's got a deposit box, which I think is this little thing right here, what I'll do is I will drop a whole bunch of this stuff into the deposit box so that Echo Light can do his thing and drop it off back at home. Uh, our team is arguing right now and we need to go back home to resolve it. I just got out here though. Like, I don't know if I want to do that. Like, that seems like kind of a waste of time to me. I took all the time to walk the hell on out here and now they're just going to fight the whole time. I'm going to go in through the roof on this building right here on 12 Grove Street and see what we can find. I got to come back with an armload of goods. That'll smooth it over. Yeah, so it wants me to know there's a thing going on back at home, but it's like, if it doesn't happen, like, exactly when you're there, or, like, when you happen to be around, that's where I feel like the system that they had in, uh, this War of Mine is a little bit more elegant than what this game has going on. And this War of Mine, you had the ability, we got some springs and whatnot in here. In this War of Mine, the fact that you were trapped at home for certain portions of the game, and then you had to leave later on, I think worked very well to that front, because it meant that you were always privy to the drama that happened, like drama and all that kind of stuff happened. Ah, there's our colander that we needed. Cocktail shakers and all that kind of stuff. There's a rat over there, if we really wanted to catch him, we could. Ain't nothing in the microwave, the sink's got bleach, rat poison, duct tape we needed for some of our upgrades. So I will take the duct tape. A few more burnables over here. We got ropes, flashlights, these antibiotics, what are these? Painkillers, multivitamins, I'll take those. The coffee machine, is there anything in the coffee machine? Ah, coffee beans, that'll be nice. Somebody be happy with that. My coffee addicts. 
We got a thermostat. We got some roasted nuts. Yep, roasted D's nuts. Put those in there. Grab some of the food. What I really need is water, however. I will take beef jerky. I will take meat with me. The basement looks like it more than likely has something. Uh, that's going to need a lock pick in order to get into. Upstairs wise, we got a bunch of thimbles, a few more pills, and some other little things around. I'm trying to remember specific items we need in order to get some of this stuff done. Like, we need like a large can and some other things, and so I'm looking for it, but it's just not here. Sweatshirts and some other little things, another mirror. Don't think we're going to need further glass at the moment until we start going into bigger projects that require glass. Uh, we got some gummy candies. Probably just eat those real fast, just graze them. A basketball. Don't think we're going to need it right now. Shoes and some other little things. Probably a light bulb and a switch in there that I'll grab. Mm, let's go down to the basement and see what's going on there. Uh, there might be some useful items down here, like a gun or something like that. Who knows? Basements can be kind of an odd thing in the United States. You never quite know what's going to be inside of them. Uh, we got a telephone. We got some bolts. We got some seeds. Uh, we got a sack up here that's got vodka, an ID card, and a PDA. Take the PDA, some of the other little things. Cogs, fishing wire. Ooh, nails. We definitely need nails. So I would be inclined to get rid of some of the stuff that we don't need in order to bring nails with us because nails are one of the big missing things that we needed for some of our upgrades and if we can find more of them I would never complain so we've got metal plates in here the pressure gauge okay so this house next to the trader actually has a few useful things that I think we will want to catalog for later we can't do anything with the weight bench right now the music is getting undeniably creepy at the moment I feel like something terrifying is about to happen if I don't get out of here so let's go let's just go for a minute people are fighting back home so we need to go back and resolve that uh, it looks like he just parachuted in from the ceiling, which is kind of interesting, but back to the church we go. I personally also think before we go back home, it would be wise to maybe see what the trader has going on. I mean, I got the post office box over here, so I can drop off my stuff. It's no biggie. Uh, if I could start a fire over here, that'd be good. So let me see if I can fuel up this fire real quick. So inside of here, we've got a number of... Oh, I can actually use fuel from home in order to do this, too. Oh, cool. We'll throw a wooden shingle in there. I mean, we got a couple of books, too, so... Might as well throw those in for a minute. It doesn't look like I can cook over here. Throwing a zipped-up hoodie and a couple of shawls, and... Let's keep that rocking for right now. Oh, there is a cook menu. Oh, no, it's not. It's still just in the old menu. Okay. As far as Dropbox items are concerned, there are a couple of things in here that I think I should head home with. So anything small that'll fit inside the box after this point, we'll send back. And then I'm going to have Echo Light take the stuff back. So if I can upgrade the campsite, I can raise the campfire if I got that stuff. But uh, he's not feeling tired right now. That's the other thing is tiredness doesn't seem to go down very quickly. Let's check out the trading center and see what we can get in here. What's up, man? What you want? Nomad traders are found around the world. These strange characters have become fixated with the idea of regrowing plant life. As a consequence, they treat seeds as a valuable currency. Okay, and so we get seeds for items and stuff like that. That sounds good to me. Uh, I will trade you... So they've got... I need bottles of water really badly, so if I can actually trade some of this stuff... You want a heating element? Or can I not sell stuff to him? It's actually in exchange for like stuff I find on the ground. So I don't think I can actually trade with this guy. I've got 29 seeds, though. And my inclination is that we need water bottles. So I'm going to buy them. We'll get a couple little ones, too, just for cooking. And so there it is. That used up the majority of our stuff. He's got traps and TV dinners and other little stuff in here. But at least we know how that mechanic functions now. Back to the church. It looks to me as though as long as the fire, like the fuel is burning over here, he moves items. Because a bunch of the items that I had in the inventory when we went into the trader are now gone. So maybe we won't head back to the church. Maybe we'll just hang out for a minute and try to make sure that uh, this stays lit so that our robot can do what he's going to do. I'll throw that stuff in there and let's finish off this house over here. We'll finish off this house and then we'll call it a day. Uh, if you like this game so far, it's called Impact Winter, a highly stylized survival game. Which in some ways I think 
takes a light approach to a lot of so the game has a lot of ideas that have been touched on in other games like games like Dead in Bermuda uh, games like this war of mine and yet it seems to do kind of the light version of all of those ideas like there are things that I like about this title but it seems to really a lot of the time just sort of devolve into you moving tons of items in between locations and just sort of like being stuck with it oh there's change in the couch hooray change in the couch change change in the couch don't need any of that stuff don't need any of that stuff, but yeah, it, it's kind of a weird game in that regard because it's fun, but it also seems to prioritize certain aspects of survival games. Like, I always hate it in the long dark when I have to spend a shit ton of time moving objects in between locations. I just don't, I don't enjoy it. I don't find that to be fun. And so the fact that it takes so long, especially with like the one to two minute long load screens in order to move items in between locations, it turns into like this thing where... I don't know. You you spend more time... The way that I'll put it like this is that when you play a game like Dead in Bermuda or This War of Mine, the parts where you're like carting items around and really not accomplishing anything are minimized. Instead, the stuff that's prioritized is the ability to like, you know, play around with your items and stuff like that. The, the, the parts that are prioritized are the parts that allow you to... I don't know what happened to my nails, by the way. I think they got taken back to base. But we'll have to wait and see what happens here. I'm going to head back to the church. But anyways, what I was saying about this is that... I personally would have made it very easy for the player to move items back and forth between the base. Uh, the campsite sort of addressed that, but the way that I would have done it is inside the inventory with Echo Light, I would have just allowed you to be like, Robot, go back to base. He takes the items back and then he comes back to you so that... It's no biggie moving items around, and instead, with the post office system, you have to stand still doing nothing for a while, or sleeping in order for him to take stuff back. When in reality, that takes equally as long as you just running it back on foot anyways, and half the time you gotta go back to base anyways because they're having some kind of, like, crisis or problem to begin with. And so I don't know. There, there are little things in this game that I probably would have changed around that would just make the whole process flow a little bit smoother. And as it stands right now, I'd probably give the game like a 6.5, 7 out of 10. Just because for every good thing that I like about it, there's like a technical thing. Or just like a small bump in the road that I'm just like, eh, I'm okay with it, but I don't know. I feel like I spend way too much time just carting items around. That's my main problem with the game right now is just that it feels like you're a courier service. You feel like you're playing mailman half the time. Uh, this game is called Impact Winter. If you want to play it for yourself, i got links for you down below. Uh, if you like what I do here on the channel, my name is Splattercat. I hang out every single day and play indie games and try to bring them to your attention uh, so that you will know about them, so that you will be able to check them out and get them for yourself. I am an indie game junkie. I absolutely adore indie games. They're one of my favorite things in the whole wide world. And so I wanted to make that, you know, a part of what I do for a living is just showing off indie games. I will see you all next time. Thank you for stopping on in. Uh, if you wanted to see more of this title, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to continue showing it off. Uh, if not, we can move on to some other things and show off more indie games. All right. Bye, everybody.